do you really need to have grass? You can still have a lawn without having grass. He was like, well, do you think there's something we could try? And I was like, frog fruit, frog fruit all day, right? We've talked about this frog fruit. So we're testing it right here. It's official, we are losing the lawn in our front yard. The final countdown has started. La revolution, grass is going bye-bye. And I know you all were asking me, can you take us along for the journey? But yet you see, my yard has already started the journey. <laughs> and it's not because of me, my neighbor, Mr. Cliff, which you've heard so many wonderful things about Mr. Cliff. He is an awesome, awesome neighbor. He wanted to get some exercise. So he was like, oh, I just started dumping the mulch on the grass because you said you wanted to do that. And he's so sweet. He's like so sweet. So today what I'm gonna to cover today is not actually removing this grass. I wanna show you a project he's doing and like I'm cons consulting on as a neighbor, whatever. This is neighbors talking and then like brainstorming on how to deal with an area. So when it comes to Mr. Cliff's yard and my yard, that's my house, Mr. Cliff's house. Technically I own this grassy strip right here. Um, I technically think of it as like that's his yard until it hits my driveway, but technically it's my yard. And putting like just mulch right here for this one strip, I think you can see it right there, seems like a ridiculous thing to do. So the, my landscape guys who actually do the mowing will mow this strip and then Mr. Cliff mows his own lawn. But Mr. Cliff is not a big fan of lawn. And I think if he had it his way, actually I know this cause he's taught, he and I, we talk a lot that he would just dump all the grass if he could. And I think you can see this, come on to his backyard cause it's gorgeous. So y'all have seen a little bit of Mr. Cliff's yard in the past. Um, it's, it's this, it's this wonderful, amazing jungle. And he is constantly just, like we kind of talked about in the lawn alternative video, he's just getting rid of grass and putting more and more stuff in. And he has this gorgeous butterfly bee haven back here. It is absolutely magical. He does do some vegetable gardening, just a tiny. Mostly he loves flowers and he loves watching the butterflies with his wife. And it's a great thing. It's a wonderful thing. But his wife's like committed to having like a little bit of grass in the front yard, I guess curb appeal, and that's fine. But one of the things him and I've been talking about is like, do you really need to have grass? You can still have a lawn without having grass. So we've talked about this, right? So we're doing a test right over here. This area next to the Florida Native Plant Landscaping Project, there's this arch. And we all kind of, at times, the landscapers, and especially Mr. Cliff, walk this area, which has killed a lot of the grass off. So what he usually has done in the past when it's kind of gotten out of control is he's done little grass plugs, but talking about lawn alternatives a lot, he was like, well, do you think there's something we could try? And I was like, frog fruit, frog fruit all day, right? We've talked about this frog fruit. So we're testing it right here. Let me talk you through what he's done. Um, I'll explain to you my thought process as he and I have talked. And then you can decide whether you want to go and do this for your area or not. So just so you get a sense of what it was like before we started doing this project over here is it was a lot like this. So you can see there's some grass here and then you can kind of see where there's a lot of uh, traffic. And of course, there is the typical Florida Mayaca sandy soil, right? It looks like sand with a dash of dirt in it. And that's pretty typical. And in it is some grass that's struggling along. There are different weeds in here. I think he's done actually a pretty good job of pulling most of the weeds. He has left in things like Maypop passion flower that's coming up over there. But other than that, he takes up mostly everything else. 
It's not a sexy look. Nobody's loving this. Whether you're for lawns or you're against lawns, generally we're all kind of like, eh, on this front. So he's basically taking kind of like an eight foot by eight foot section-ish. Like it's kind of not totally square, but we're gonna go with it. It's about eight foot by eight foot. And he's hand removed the phenomenal weeds that we've been getting in the area. And he took cuttings of the frog fruit. As you can see, some of these cuttings right now. So these have been in the ground for about five days now, just so you get an idea. So these were just like cuttings. Uh, they varied in length from about six inches. He did some that were three inches and he has just placed them all over the place. So hopefully this gives you some insight into, you don't have to buy a ton of plants if you can go find some frog fruit. Like it's not an endangered species in Florida. You can usually find them in parking lots. Go get some cuttings and you can start propagating it pretty quickly. Cause you've seen in my yard, it's going one plant and it's still going crazy. These summer months, it's doing amazing. So he put in a, he has this <laughs> sprinkler that he can kind of move around and he has it attached to his main water, not to our reclaimed water system. So just some information as you're thinking about like, do you want it to go the distance on this? Now you can see in some areas, the soil's starting to get a little bit compact. He did loosen it up just slightly with a rake, um, just to the top, but we do know we've got a pretty high seed bank in the area, especially because of my yellow top flower there which will definitely pop up, though he's been having fun transplanting that into his garden. So yay for Mr. Cl <laughs> and then what he's done is he's put in little starts almost every four or five inches in a grid pattern. I think it looks really good for five days in. I mean, honestly, it should be really wilty and droopy. And you can see like some of the stuff is getting kind of beat up right here. This is a little sad, right? Will that cutting make it? I don't know. And then, but if you look over here, five days later, right? Look at some of these ones over here already. They're already perking up. They're already perking up. I mean, this is kind of cool because some of them are here because we've talked a lot about, right? They can reroute right at these little node points right here. Here, I'll turn my camera around so I can show you. Okay, so let's take a second to look closer. So when we look at the nodes, so what we're really trying to do is get these to root along their nodes. So every point where you kind of see like this little juncture here, it has the opportunity for this plant to go and reset roots. So you kind of see right here, there's some roots at a node. Let me take you in closer, really close. See these little roots, right? These can branch in and then you see this is a trailing plant. So this point, does not, oh, come on, does not have um, any roots yet, but it could very shortly. So by having it placed up against the ground, has the opportunity to root here, root here. So even though some of the plant might end up dying, it's okay because it has multiple points. And this is why it can take off really quickly. It's gonna set roots, set roots, set roots, and then it'll get going. And you can see here, he took a longer cutting, put it in, ran it, put the part that was at a node underground, ran it, put the node underground, and then he left this part right so that it can get some sunlight um, and, get, and, get, and have the opportunity to naturally start noding and rooting on the ground. And you can see some of these, right? They are looking really good. They're starting to look a little perky. So whatever, so what I always look for to know that a plant's doing okay is new growth. If it's not putting on new growth, it's definitely no bueno. So we're looking for them to start perking up and then having new growth. So we can see already some of these are starting to stand up a little bit. Some of it has to do with the orientation. But if we look into this section, I'll bring you down really low. You can see some of them are starting to stand up like right there, whoopsies. We got some that are starting to stand up over here in this section. So they're looking really, really happy for five days in. This right here, is a new section. He just did this yesterday. He came and get some additional cuttings from my yard for this section right back here. And so you can see, they're really sad looking. They're very droopy. To be expected, to be expected. So sad. Oh, look how sad those are. Now when it comes to watering the area, he's doing every day right now, if not twice a day. I don't know, that might be a little too much, especially because we've been getting rainstorms. The ground is pretty saturated once you get a few inches down. But remember, a lot of the root system for this, especially when it's first getting started, is right at the top, which is, you know, easy for that to really dry out very quickly. 
So as you consider establishing this, if you're going to take cuttings, you definitely need to keep the soil damp, right? Because that's what we saw with the plant in my garden, which let's go back to it right now. If you look at our one plant, so this was one plant that started over here. Don't mind my weeds. One plant started right here, was a little four inch um, plant from one of the local nurseries. It has grown all of this. See all this back here, all like, okay, I'll flip you around again. One plant started right there. It grew this way. And now look at it. It's all this, all of that is growing up and over. There's like an aesthetic, aesthetic stone right here. All that has filled in. Look at it, it's all the way back there. Following along. It has looked for every little bit it can get along this strip. It has turned the corner and started making its way this way. It is turning the corner here and starting to make its way this way. It actually had jumped and covered this entire walkway. I cut it back. And now it has already rerooted on this side and is helping fill in all my gaps in between my wildflowers. So that the great thing is because frog fruit is such a natural, low growing native ground cover to here in Florida and actually the entirety of the Southern United States is that it's filling in the spaces between my wildflowers. So the seeds can still drop down, but this plant only gets about six inches tall. It does not get very tall, even though it's like growing up on itself. So you can see it's filling in the gaps helping me keep out actual weeds that I do not want. I'm really excited to see how this is gonna play out over in the grass area. I've seen a lot of different people who've done it online. I watch neighbors who kind of take care of their lawn, or don't take care of their lawn very well. And that's where I've seen it really take off and I've watched it like a really nosy neighbor for a very long time. So I've always been really curious to try and work with it when it's being really well maintained and actually I don't know how it's well maintained. Like this is not something you're gonna mow, mow every week, but not being like completely beaten down with pesticides, not being beat down like mowed to like this tall. I have a neighbor whose yard was almost totally frog fruit at one point. They just, they mow it like an inch all the time. So the frog fruit eventually started to die out and other weeds started moving in. But if you were only gonna mow it four times a year, you know, and you did it to your like top setting, you got it to four inches, which talking to Mr. Cliff, he does have a lawnmower that can do the four inches, right? And he likes that because he's out here every week mowing the lawn and he's not a fan of it. But we've talked about if we can get it established in this area, right, then we can slowly start to spread it in his side yard area slash my area and we can start eliminating grass and then mowing and ed mowing four times a year at most. And then really you're just doing edging on a weekly basis during the rainy season because it's crazy right now. Seriously, every week we're edging this right now. And what's helping right now is he's when he's getting cuttings, he's getting them from the edgings. That's what he's doing. I told him like, you can take it from the main part. He's like, yeah, but you have so much on the sidewalk. And I'm like, well, good point, valid, valid. I mean, good neighbor, right? <laughs> So what's really exciting about using this location is that we're in this area all the time. Mr. Cliff and I usually run in to each other somewhere right around here and then we sit and chat for a while. <laughs> so we'll have lots of times to really observe and talk about and see this area and see how does it really handle traffic. You know, we know this was such a high traffic area that St. Even, St. Augustine grass didn't even handle it. So will frog fruit handle it? What will it do versus kind of milder traffic? Because like areas like right here where the grass is dying out. I really don't know why it's dying out. But in these kind of areas, will it hold up pretty well? How well does it do in kind of some of the semi-shade? You know, because we get some varying light in this back area too. And now slowly, this entire area, this entire strip until my fence line, we will slowly start converting into a native lawn alternative. One way or another, this stuff is starting to go. And I know he's really excited about it because he's not the biggest fan of mowing every weekend, but he doesn't mind being out in the garden. He loves being out in the garden. And yeah, just having to edge is, is such a decrease in time versus having to constantly mow. So I know this will be an amazing, amazing journey. If you have questions or things that you wanna figure out, cause we will definitely check in in a couple months on this or weeks, whatever, ask me the questions in the comments down below so that we can go ahead and look for it. We'll watch and we'll see how this progresses over the coming months. And if you're considering losing the lawn, go ahead and check out this video on lawn alternatives. And if you're looking to learn more about wildflowers and wildflower gardening, check out this series right here. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye.